Hello, Emily Taylor here in my studio. Today I'm going to show you how I quilt one of my collage projects. So it's the same whether it's a full-size quilt or just a block project like this. This is going to be a pillow and in a previous video I demonstrated how to do mitered corners, mitered blocks, or uh, excuse me, mitered borders um, on this and now it's ready to quilt. So I've pressed it, the seams are all, everything is flat and tidy. I've also uh, measured out and cut a piece of fabric for the backing of this. And I wanna make sure that I lay the backing uh, so that it is wrong side up, so right side down. So this is just making my quilt sandwich. I've, I've uh, got some nice, fine, thin batting. This is 80-20 uh, batting that is sold on Collage Quilter in really lovely quantities for small projects. And then finally, here is the block that will be my quilt, or uh, that I'll be quilting, that will be my pillow top. So there we go. All of those pieces are together. Now I want to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna use, I like just using these basting pins. They're like safety pins, but they're really, really loose. And so they're really easy to manipulate. And I always start my quilting in the center uh, to make sure that I move out. So I'm just gonna put the pins not, not through the collage, just on the outsides, just to hold everything together so that it doesn't slip around while I'm getting started quilting. And then once I've uh, begun to quilt the center flower, I can take these basting pins out and move them out to the outside edge. Just making sure that every time I move pins that my uh, backing fabric in particular is really, really flat. So I'm just gonna take a minute right now and just make sure that that's nice and flat and that looks great so i'm going to just continue to add a few more pins so that everything stays nice and tidy and then we will take this over to the sewing machine and we will get started so i'll be see you at the machine in just a minute all right here i am at my machine i wanted to talk just a little bit about the needles that i'm using so the needle that is in my machine right now is this Schmetz non-stick needle and it's the 9014 size. Now this is sold on collagequilter.com because this seems to be really um, easy to use when I'm going through these layers of collage. Um, it's designed for use with fusible web. So that's the, ne the needle that I have. And then the thread that's in my machine, I will change my thread throughout this. Right now it's this purple thread and I've selected the dark purple that just because I, I always like to match my thread to whatever I'm working on. So I'll change my thread a couple times. I can see I'm gonna use purple. I will use this pink thread and I will use a little bit of this yellow uh, for the center of the flower and as I move out here. Again, I, I don't consider myself a great quilter I enjoy the quilting part, but I always select thread that matches my collage. Now this thread is 40 weight um, isocord. It's 100% polyester. It's designed for um, embroidery, but it, you can use it in quilting. It's a really, really strong thread, and um, it is sold in bundles on collagequilter.com. So when you buy it, you buy uh, four uh, for example, yellow, and it will have a good variety of shades of yellow or shades of pink um, because I do like to have a lot of variety of thread color when I'm working. So that is, uh, my machine is all set up. The other thing that I've got, this is my Bernina um, B790 quilt machine, quilt and embroidery sewing machine. Um, so my foot, I've got the, uh, free motion uh, stitch regulator foot. Now, the other thing that I want to point out that's super, super important, before I begin a project, I never will start on my original project. I always have something that allows me to test my 
thread tension on the top and bottom and make sure that it's it's good sometimes you need to adjust your tension uh, based on what you're sewing so uh, especially if you're going from collage that has fusible on it to just a plain cotton so that's a really really good idea to always test to make sure that you've got kind of you know that it's working the way you like so to get started this is the way I get started I will always pull up my thread that's underneath make sure I catch that bottom thread just because I don't like to have any um, I don't like any nests <laughs> underneath my on the on the reverse side so now I'm I've got my thread I'm just gonna do a few locking stitches and I'm just testing to make sure that this looks okay seems to be working smoothly and now I'm going to remove this and just double check on the stitches so they look really good on the front and on the back that looks really good as well so now I feel like I'm ready to get started with my main project so I'm gonna pull this over and I am starting with the dark thread so I will start in these areas here and again what I will do is pull my hold on to this little tail put my foot down put my needle down and raise it back up and then ever so carefully pull my pull my thread out um, I have where I need my little uh, tweezers Amelia can you grab my tweezers I really like the tweezers that's another use of my tweezers Amelia they're on that work table right there thanks you know Amelia is my right hand and she helps me a lot so let me show you these tweezers how slick these are these are the Heidi Profity tweezers they just help me pull threads out really easily I like to have those handy too uh, those are also available on collagequilter.com okay so now I'm just going to move ahead and do a few locking stitches and the way I quilt is I'm really kind of doodle stitching one thing I forgot to that I really like I like having these silly goofy looking gloves on because they have grippy uh, fingers on them so that I can have a really good grip of my fabric sometimes my my hands will slip if I don't have those on so I'm just thinking about kind of drawing with the thread and the other thing is I want to make sure that my stitch lines, my stitching, my quilting is quite dense. So I recommend, I, I quilt probably a quarter inch between stitch lines. And I, tw I like to twist my, my project around so that I can make sure I see exactly what I'm doing and if you don't feel like you're a good quilter there's that's another reason to always match your thread because nobody's gonna see your mistakes they're just gonna look at your beautiful collage so pretty easy peasy I will just keep working on this and in a minute, when I'm all done with this dark area, I will change out my thread.
All right, so I just finished quilting the flower part of this. It looks really nice and I can take a look at the back. I've got a few threads back here that I need to cut and there was a little thread nest there. I'm actually just gonna pull it out. <laughs> um, but you, you can see that I need to just trim up those threads and I'm not super concerned about how this looks on the back, although it looks really, really cool because this will be the inside of a pillow. Um, so you can just, I, I, again, I just wanna show you that where I have drawn up the thread um, and then I, I wasn't careful to hold on to it and make a little knot is where I got those little um, thread nests. So just be careful of that. Always make sure that you pull your thread up from the back side to avoid that. Um, so now I'm going to, I've got yellow thread in my machine and I'm just going to finish out um, getting around the flower and these areas here. Now this is all, this is all collage as well. So these pieces were made to cut. Um, I cut them and applied them, their raw edges. I cut them to look like ribbon. Um, so I need to be sure that I make sure this is all tacked down as well. All right, so let's just start right here. And I'm going to put my needle down and pull up the thread from the other side. Make sure I get that other one. Oops, I didn't get it there. Let's try it again. There it is. See how handy it is to have those sharp tweezers. I'll put my needle down and here we go. We're gonna make a couple uh, locking stitches. And I'm just gonna kind of make this up as I go. I think what I'll do is, um, I'm just kind of going along the outside of the triangle and then I'll just do some vertical lines inside. Not super straight, I don't care about it being super straight that well, that much. And then I can go back down this edge and do the same thing with this triangle. And then, so I've just outlined that. I really just think about, I don't put a lot of thought into the quilting until I get the fabric in front of me. And then I look at the motif that it, that's going on. And like for this one, I think I'm just gonna do some vertical stripes. So I'm just kind of doing some vertical stitching along that edge. A meandering, thin meandering along that. And then we'll do the same kind of a vertical stitching there. And I think I'll go ahead and, and do an all over meander on this one as well. Now, as I run into these pins, these basting pins, everything is secure now. And as long as I'm very careful that everything is flat, um, I should have no problem quilting the rest of this just fine. So I'm going to position this kind of the way I want and get started on doing a meander stitch on this. A meander stitch like this just takes a little bit of practice. It's really easy. It's kind of a good filler stitch and I can do it quickly on something. So I change my stitching a lot. In addition to changing my thread color, I change my stitch pattern a lot. And I think that's just 
a lovely way to emphasize each area, each different distinct area of a block or a quilt. Okay, so that's that's that meander is done. It looks really nice. I'll leave the outside of this until I get all this collage finished. So let's go ahead and just do the same thing I did over here. And let's do that meander again. I'm kind of careful to make sure I'm getting all the edges because this is raw edge. So as this gets worn and if I want to wash it, I need to make sure that the edges of each piece, especially these larger pieces in the corners, have been tacked down. And at any time I want to turn my, I've got my setting here so that my needle uh, is down anytime I stop, which makes it really easy to pivot the fabric underneath. One thing that's kind of nice, so I just did a locking stitch. If I don't want to cut the thread and bring the thread up again, I can just lift the needle up, lift my foot up, and just slide it. And that's going to pull the thread to where I need it to go. And then I can set it back down, and then I can clip my threads when I'm, uh, when I'm finished. Let's pull that basting pin out. Right, here's the big reveal here's the reverse side I hope you can see the detail probably not but here is the finished pillow top now let's just kind of zoom in on this quilting so that you can see the detail work that I've done 
So I, I did very dense quilting on the flower and on these areas around here because these are also just uh, fused onto the fabric with raw edges. So I made sure that those edges are secured really tightly. You can see also that I left the yellow unquilted because I kind of like that negative space and it kind of makes the it makes it poof out a little bit and because this is going to be a pillow top I, I really like the way that makes it look so that's quilting on a collage quilt I am Emily Taylor thanks again for joining me you can find my tutorials and my products for sale at collagequilter.com